Gerontology is a study of sociological, psychological and biological aspects of ageing. It's an holistic field, encompassing the individual, society and the environment, as well as the interaction between those three. Because of the wide-ranging ethos, gerontology and gerontologists have a, a huge role in society today. So they can be employed in diverse fields such as leisure, tourism, broadcasting, as well as traditional routes such as academic research and lectures at universities. Ageing in itself is not happening in a silo, nor is it constrained to only Western societies. It is anticipated that by 2050 there will be over 2 billion people aged 60 and over. And in the UK alone, this number is expected to exceed 19 million. So with this comes a range of opportunities, and not just the issues and problems associated with populist media. These opportunities take the form of both civic and social engagement. But we also have to remember that older people are, in and of themselves, a consumer group. A consumer group who are becoming more savvy, and a consumer group to whose needs we have to meet. But to meet these needs we have to box clever. And this includes, but is not limited to, just education. We have to make sure that the needs and wants of older adults are understood. We're not looking to scaremonger with statistics around dementia or stereotypes of frailty, but we have to highlight the contributions of older adults to society and the way in which we can engage rather than marginalise them. But why is it important to understand the needs of older adults? Well, in 2010, people over the age of 65 in the UK made a contribution to the economy exceeding £41 billion. And this is a trend that's increasing year on year. Their contributions are many and varied, including spending power, taxation and social support. Over one million adults over the age of 65 are currently working in the UK, so it's important to also rethink the workplace. We need to encourage lifelong learning, helping older adults to develop new skills and stay in the workplace for longer. Training and development are now no longer the preserves of the younger employees. In the community itself, the ageing population provides the opportunity to reinvent, creating more social cohesion for the benefit of all. The front line is now no longer the GP, nor the health visitor, or the social worker, and neither should it be. These are now the shop workers, the local amenities staff, and the next door neighbour. It's these people, with increased support and increased training, who can spot the early signs of dementia, enabling assistance to be put in place, allowing older people to live in their own homes for longer, supported and maintaining their independence. The over 65s represent an emerging market for business. They're not an homogenous group and they don't necessarily want the same things. We have to look at design through the eyes of an older adult to understand what it is that they want, not just what they need. Businesses are starting to react to this market Understanding that good design is fundamental, irrespective of age. But it's not about shifting the responsibility onto the shoulders of the community, nor onto gerontologists. Old people themselves have a responsibility to create a more positive image about old age. Having a need for support is not a weakness. It can be part of an ageing process where an older person can compensate for losses and actively increase their skill sets to ensure they stay engaged. Part of this engagement is about empowering older adults to use social media and mobile technologies to facilitate and enrich their daily lives. The ageing population is not an abstract concept. It's very much something that's happening and is happening now. There are major risks not only for the current generation of older adults, but for generations to come if we don't grasp the challenges and create opportunities with them.